This is Bob, and he can just get right into talking about reality. Uh, this is The Meaning of Lif by Douglas Adams and John Lloyd. It is the original dictionary of things there should be words for. Spittle, to fritter away perfectly good life pretending to de develop creative projects. Uh, thanks for um, spending the morning spiddling with me. Okay, reality. I'd like to preface my talk with a quote by Picasso. Everything that you can imagine is real. Hairy-legged walkers. The biggest gayest rugby uh, tournament ever. An amazing experience. Daddy's squiggly line. It's a student handbook. We put a beer mat on the cover. We thought they'd use it. Uh, a cancer-ridden cookie monster. A suggestion box that talks back. Uh, balance in education. The students come first. Um, a new steel developed by a Swedish steel company and Dutch engineering company. So all of these projects um, couldn't have been made real without imagination. Um, but not just that. Um, I think that's really important. Um, but for us in, in Red and Grey, and me especially um, in Red and Grey, and as a lecturer in, in NCAD and in ECV in the south of France, um, research is paramount to everything that we do. Um, research is to see what everybody else has seen and to think what nobody else has thought. Um, our studio has always worked, um, or has always tried to work as 80% Antwerpers and 20% form givers. Um, in the Netherlands, an Antwerper is a creative uh, conceptual designer, the person who comes up with the ideas. Um, and they have specific roles in the Netherlands. So as an Antwerper, that is your job. Your job is to be creative and to come up with the ideas. As a form giver, your job is to add style to those ideas. And it's a separate role in the Netherlands. Um, and I didn't know that until I moved there and then realized, oh. Um, luckily, I was a really shit form giver. So um, <laughs> I was put into the Antwerper side of things. And we've always tried to do that in the studio, to have that uh, ratio of 80-20, and it hasn't always worked. An awful lot of the times it has gone 50-50, or it has gone the other way. Um, but we're very conscious of it, and we really want it to be this ratio. And how we do that is to put a major emphasis on research. 80% of our time is given to research, and 20% of our time is given to design the final form giving of the design. So I'm going to just run through a couple of really small examples with us, which has inspired us and projects that we've done. Our research is quite broad and deep. Um, we don't really look at other designers. Um, of course, we know about other designers. We have lots of books. We have a really good library. So we're always reading about how they do things. Um, but for projects, our research goes beyond that. So this is uh, a single man uh, film by Tom Ford, a beautiful film. Um, and the main character is a gay man living in uh, America in the 50s. And it, it's, he's quite depressed. He, he finds life difficult um, because of his situation. And when we see him alone, the saturation on the movie comes way down. So the tone of the film is, is darkened. And then when he meets his uh, possible love interest, the saturation is turned right the way up in the film. So it's brightened. So you, you, you almost, as a viewer, you feel, oh yeah, you feel much better. And you feel better for him. 
Um, and we've tried this, uh, we've tried to use this actual system, this structure for a client in, in America, Second Muse, um, and try to, how can we, we asked ourselves the question of how can we turn the volume up and down on the color depending on their tone of voice and who they're talking to and when and how they're talking to them. David Hockney is a huge influence um, in the studio to all of us. Um, there's five people in our studio in Dublin and, and we work with one in, in the Netherlands as well. Um, and the reason why Hockney is such an influence is because of his, um, his ability to push and understand drawing. Um, because when you research, it's really, really important to draw. Um, because with photography, you photograph surfaces. With drawing, you're drawing volume, you're drawing light, you're drawing change. You're looking much more intently than you do when you photograph. So it's really, really important um, to, to draw. No matter what your ability of drawing is, you're going to look deeper and harder at things when you do draw. West Side Story. I'm not going to dance. Well, I might dance later. Um, and it's not, the, it's not West Side Story that has influenced us, but it's the creative team that made West Side Story happen. And it's a really, really interesting. I read about this in, the, in the, uh, the New York Journal. And the creative team and how they were brought together, how they weren't working because everybody knew each other until they started to add friction. They started to add people that uh, were of different levels. And from that friction became creativity. And it's a really, you can look it up, but it's a really, really interesting story. And this has laid the foundation for all of the workshops that we would do with clients. We make sure that that creative friction happens from the diverse group of people in, the, in, in our workshops. Ernest Hemingway, for sale, baby shoes, never worn. Um, which is an amazing, shortest story ever told. Because you question, why are the baby shoes never worn? Did something happen to the baby? Maybe the baby has too many shoes. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> He won a, the story goes he, he was in a bar, well that's probably true. The story goes he was in a bar and he, ma he made a bet that he could write the shortest story ever told. Um, the reason why uh, we came about this was because um, we were asked by a company a couple of years ago um, called Top Desk in the Netherlands to uh, pitch for a job. And we got shortlisted and it was between us and a bunch of rank amateurs called Total Design. And um, the rank amateurs lost, um, and we won. And it was all about, they wanted to, it wasn't a graphic design job, it was interesting because it was all about storytelling, and they wanted to um, figure out ways of telling their story. So our process was to look at multiple ways of telling story, from objects to spaces to the shortest story ever told. And actually, this really resonated with us when we did it. It was just part of our research. And we now use this structure for every brand identity that we do. Engaging partnerships, redefining recruitment, future secured. So this is a project that we've recently finished. Um, and they are a recruitment company. And of course, with any project, with any brand, you go as wide as you can. And you, 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 know, you have to understand the grand narrative of, of that company. But you also have to distill that down. Um, and our system is to, is to distill it down into a six-word story. So how they do it, what they do, and why they do. And that six-word story then becomes the brief for us for everything that we do. Whether we're designing a reception space, whether we're designing a 10-minute film, we have a six-word story that the client has written uh, based on our structure that then becomes our brief. David Boscher. So I was watching a TV program uh, was a few years ago. It was a whole series of things about 60s artists. Um, and Boscher is an English artist and really interesting guy, lives in LA. And he talked about the three distances that you look at art when you walk into a gallery space. So when you walk into a gallery space, you look at the piece of art from a distance. And you look at it and you kind of survey everything. 
you look at the kind of uh, the context that in which it's in. The second thing that you do is you walk right up to it and you look at the detail in front of you. You look at the craft, you look at the brush strokes, you look at the etchings, you look at the, 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 the weight of line that is used. And the third thing that you do is that you then find your own space. So you kind of, you know, everybody's done this where you've gone into a gallery and you're kind of standing there and then you go, whoop, whoop, and then you find your comfortable zone in front of it. And then you, and then, and you spend more time there and you look at it there. And this, I, I, the, it was a half an hour show, but that one little segment really hit with me, and I was like, okay, there's something really, really interesting here. At the same time, I was reading a book um, about Buckminster Fuller, uh, who's an American designer and artist, uh, architect, and an artist, I suppose, um, uh, Bucky to his mates, I don't know. Um, so he designed the geocidic dome, you m uh, might know him from that. But Buckminster Fuller describes his, his own process as being macro-comprehensive and micro-incisive. So he looks at the big picture, he looks at the ecology, he looks at everything that is connected to everything else. And he also looks at the fine detail, every single little nut and bolt, and why they're used and who put them there. So it's a really, really interesting process. So that kind of, at the same time I was thinking of that, I was thinking of Bosher. So I thought, oh, well, I should improve what Buckminster Fuller did. <laughs> so I added mesoempathetic, mezzo being middle, and empathy, of course, being the most important attribute that any designer can have. Because if we can understand the needs of other than others, then design can address them. So now we have our, 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 our structure, I suppose, for how we work. Um, this is a, a project that I've been working on since 2014. It's a Dutch engineering company. And they have, um, so there's 260 plants worldwide that they work with. Essentially what they do is they create the technology for gas plants to be able to make fertilizer. Okay. Um, and each country gets its, each country or there's plants in uh, many plants in some countries but they get their own flag which becomes part of the identity system the flag is based on their location the gas capacity the technologies that they use so there's a kind of system that is used and then when they uh, um, uh, a new plant gets the flag presented and all that kind of stuff um, so kind of interesting it's a huge company so we have done loads and loads of you know, templates for them, just bucket loads of them. Um, the imagery is where we brought macro, meso, micro into. So we work an awful lot with Matthew Thompson, who's a photographer and a good friend of mine. Um, and the first project that we had to do is we had to go to France, uh, La Harve, the plant in La Harve. Um, it's the only one I went to. He then went off around the world to China and places. Um, so we asked Matthew to um, consider macro, mezzo, micro in his photography. So he took large landscape photographs of the plant and as much of the surrounding area as possible so you could kind of understand the context. And context is everything in design. Um, He then looked at the people. And this is really, you know, this is one of my favorite photographs that he's taken because it's, it's not easy to do this. This is in the middle of a conversation where a guy is explaining some, like, God knows what, um, uh, the scrubber and the filter for the hydrator. Um, <laughs> but it's really interesting. You know, it's a kind of, it's a great photograph and you kind of, you get that and the Stammy Carbon guy's in the middle. And micro, of course, being the details, and then just beautiful photographs. And he went around just kind of climbing into tubes and pipes and things and photographing just, just these little, little things. Um, and it kind of reminded me of, um, I was in the Glucksmann Gallery a few years back, um, designed by O'Donnell Toomey. And I remember walking down the stairs in the Glucksmann Gallery and the banisters, all the screws, were exactly horizontal, every single one of them. I was just thinking, 
holy shit, like O'Donnell to me are mental. Like that's the level of detail. And But I left going, that's the level of detail that we should all aspire to, to have that. The Dutch call it mirenerkers, which means ant fuckers. Um, <laughs> we then sent Matthew to China and Mongolia. He had a good time. Fair play to him. Uh, I didn't go. That. Um, then we sent them to Bangladesh and we asked them to slightly change things because we already have uh, what it is and what it is is engineering and what it is is fertilizers but what it does is agriculture and it's, it's the human side of things. So what it is and what it does and we needed to capture what it does as well. So he then looked at the landscape in which these farmers use this fertilizer. He then met, met all of the farmers um, and the, the series of photographs and these are absolutely stunning, amazing. And then he looked at the product, what, what comes from this. So it's kind of beautiful. Now we have the full, full story. Um, so that's micro, macro, mezzo, micro. Another example, and that it's kind of implicit, really, when you see the work, you don't, you don't think about it. Um, but another example, and this is explicit, this is really, you know, we've worked with Morris Ward for a long time. Um, I'll have to do this quickly. Oh, shit. You see that? Look at that. Huh? Look at that. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> so there's a dial on the cover so you can, because they're a logistics company and they work worldwide, it, it twists so you can tell the time in different countries. Um, but Morris Ward's um, logo is a biplane. So it became kind of clear to us that because it's a biplane, they have a view from above, which is interesting when you think about uh, our, 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 our system. So we talked to them about creating this notebook um, and using, explicitly using our system. Um, and we went and we researched all of the different stories. We researched um, just, yeah, we did a lot of, yeah, it's kind of, it's a notebook and we spent a lot of time on this. Um, this is just a hand-drawn map with uh, uh, ocean currents. It's a, uh, three colors um, the two are the two you can't really see it here but the the pink and the uh, yellow are, are fluorescent and so it was really interesting and we gathered stories and this is Charles Duke I don't know if anybody's heard of Charles Duke um, Charles Duke was a, an American astronaut who took his family to the moon with him um, and I, I this man's amazing so what he did was he took a photograph of his family outside their house in Florida, then he put them in a jiffy bag, brought them to the moon, and took a photograph of his family on the moon, um, which is just kind of amazing. So here's our kind of macro big picture. Mezzo being Christo and Jean-Claude, so there's a kind of case study for each, and then there's lots of other smaller stories. Um, who deal on a human level and, and they wrap things and it's all about habitat and places that people use. So again, really, really interesting. Um, and the illustrator here is a girl called Orla Murphy, um, who was one of my students years ago um, and we still use all the time. Really, really sound. Works in London. Look her up, she's very good. Uh, uh, micro incisive being, you know, there's lots, of, there's lots of different things, but, you know, there's uh, little extracts as well and botany and fractals and things like that. So it's very explicitly used this. And then the last project that I'm going to talk about, and before I give out some free t-shirts, um, is the Dublin Cookie Company, which is an identity we just finished. It's quite interesting because, you know, you, you, you might see that from our projects that they are very much, there's quite a broad range from a fucking huge engineering company in Holland to a cookie company in Dublin 8 uh, run by two women. Um, but it's the same process. We went through the same process with these guys. We did the workshops with the two of them. Um, we have their six word story. That then became their brief, um, which is exactly the same. We did the workshops with Stammy Carbon and there was 200 people in the workshops. They have their six word story. That then became their brief, which then uh, has an element of macro, mezzo, micro in it. Um, the concept for this is all about moments and memories. And when you, um, when, you, when you bite into one of their cookies, the idea is that 
it sparks a memory. The hippocampus goes into overdrive and you go, oh, that taste reminded me of that time when we did that thing. <laughs> um, and we tried to illustrate those moments. We tried to illustrate those memories, those little sparks of, oh, mm, yeah, oh shit, that reminds me of, you know. Uh, so that's kind of the concept behind uh, their identity. The system came into it when we looked at the language that they use. Um, Dublin being macro, uh, company being meso, and not company as in the limited company, but company as in the company of people. Uh, and the micro is in the cookie. It's in the ingredients in the cookie. Um, and so Dublin being Jesus, come here, right, how are you? Uh, company being comforts, happiness, surprise, delight. <laughs> And cookie being chewy, fluffy, spicy, and sugary. So, of course, what you get then is you have a little system, a language system, using those, using our system, which ends up with Jay's chewy comforts and Khmer fluffy happiness. And these are just little things that they can tweet. The other thing from this system is they now have written their story based on our structure. Um, and Dublin Cookie Company. Uh, and... They were in recently featured in some magazine, and again, they conducted or th they were interviewed, and they were conscious of this. This is now theirs, Dublin Cookie Company. They need to make sure that they have that, and that that becomes inherent in, in everything that they do. And what you get is you get just you get things like this. This is just a poster that we did. All right, spicy surprise. Um, so that's it. It's quick. I hope was that quick. That's twenty minutes. I was told twenty minutes. Um, um, so thank you very much. Uh, I just to, to end, I like I didn't do all of this. Well, I did most of it. They're, they're not here. Oh shit, it's been filmed. I didn't do all of this. <laughs> uh, all of these people help um, and many more. Um, so thank you very much. <laughs>